welcome back to Ulti.TV coverage of XEUCF 2021. Bringing you action now from the mixed division. A quarterfinal matchup between Austria's catch up from Graz and they are up against Hrut from the Netherlands. It's been a, a wild day here at uh, XEUCF. I think maybe probably due to the heavy rain we've had the past few days. There's been a few schedule changes, so do keep an eye out on our YouTube channel and on the various OTTV and EUF social pages to make sure you're on top of all on everything that is going on here in Brugge, in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, even. I'm thinking of the Netherlands because I'm looking at Hut. They're all wearing a much more classic, understated red jersey today with the blue shorts, and they are starting going from left to right against the Austrians of Ketchup Kratz. Or just Kratz. And a simple drop on the underneath pass. That is a suboptimal way to start the game. Swinging into the, into the centre in a continuation around. Not going to be the goal because there is a pick. I don't know exactly how far ago that happened. And he's back in play with Klein Hubble. Finding a shot through to Michael Geisel. And it's a break on the first point for catch up. And the Austrians take a 1 0 lead. So maybe this game is not going to go the way that many thought, where I think you have to say Hrut are uh, uh, the firmest of firm favourites. But maybe Hrut have other ideas. Catch up to pull once more. This time Ort fields it on the hop. Swings to Blasman. Blasman puts it deep. Looking for Floor Kulats right on the money. There's the Chris that we know and love. Simple swing. Bang it deep. Floor does the business in the end zone. That'll be one all. And a more. Let me try that again. A more Hrut style point, I could scarcely imagine. One all the current score here on Ulti.TV's coverage of XEUCF. Mixed quarter final action, had some schedule changes today. We'll bring you more information on that in a little while. Allow me to introduce myself. I am, of course, I say of course, Benjamin Reese joined by the one and only Mr. Lorcan Murray. Hello, Lorcan. Hello, Benjamin. It is an absolute pleasure to be joining you here today to watch two teams I've got a lot of love for, long-standing affinity for Groot and a newfound respect and appreciation for Graz after watching their game last night. So the first O point now for the Austrians. And they're going to try with a deep shot of their own. It's going to bounce and out of the hands of Magdalena Kleintz. I thought that she had that, and it seemed like it nestled in there, but she just couldn't get the hand closed and shut. So Ruth are going to get a shot. See it there on the replay. It's uh, Matja Kulin who does just enough there to dissuade the disc from going in. Picked up on the turn by Hrut. Underneath comes Lola Dam. D-line stalwart for so many seasons now for the Dutch side. Athletic bid on, the, on a throw that's too far out in front. There's no second effort grab available. So that just turns back into the hands of the Austrians who can't do anything with it either. 
So maybe both sides finding their feet a little bit early in this contest. Feeling each other out, maybe a few surprising turnovers. But they'll work it and work it out. So catch up got here with a bit of an upset in their pre-quarter matchup. As Tam didn't quite bring that one in on the far sideline. Yeah, they upset uh, Monkey from Grenoble on Universe 15-14 to earn their place in the quarterfinals. And they're, but they're not looking particularly clean on this, their first O point of the game. Klein Happel goes down the far sideline. Turns, finds, isolates the reset. Continuing towards this near sideline into the hands of Keitzmeyer. And now they've got a nice little bit of flow going. Put out to space, one leads it for the other. Klein Happel now has a goal to go along with an assist from earlier. That'll be 2 1 to catch up. Really impressive play by Ketchup, swinging it around under pretty immense pressure. You saw the immense form of Fuchs Schapp flying through the air but getting nothing for it and holding their nerve. This Ketchup Graz team have really risen above expectations. When we streamed them last night, which we were uh, fortunate enough to do together at 7 o'clock on this game pitch, leftovers. great game against this, against leftovers, Ketchup had no wins at that point and they were basically fighting to stay in the tournament. They need to win by a certain number in order to stay in it, to get into that pre-quarter position against the terrible monkey. Or, sorry, that's uh, playing in the open this time. Against, against monkey. Monkey's Gren monkey Grenoble. And then to go from that, which was an impressive performance yesterday evening. You can find it on YouTube. Huge layout day. And then that's just a bit of an overthrow. But to come out of that and then be putting it up to Root, who were, you know, let's, let's be honest here, fairly considered favorites. I mean, they are they are firm, strong favourites. I don't think it's any doubt about who the bookies would probably have winning this one. But so far, catch up doing the business. They are one break to the goods. So we'll see how Rook respond. I expect a pretty strong response from them. This is, well, this is the European Championships. They've got their eyes on Worlds next year, and this is something of a culling, uh, a trial to make that Worlds team for a lot of these players. This one is lasered and is flat, and Gratz have defenders in the midfield. He can pick that one off happily, but they're struggling to find offense downfield after the turn. It's one of the things that Crooks are good at. They do perhaps play with a bit more abandon on some of those shots because they back themselves. They back their own line defense after they do turn it over to be able to get it back. On the far sideline, Messner finds an option in the center. Andrea Zenz finds a cutter jinking and jiving over the head, just about gets it through to Daniela Settina. Now a cutter down the line. It's Mesner looking hammer towards the back corner of the end zone. There is no one there at all except a grateful catch up receiver. Another break for the Austrians. They've found something cooking early in this contest, Lorcan. They're now 3 1 up. Nobody was expecting it. Everybody is loving it. There's nothing like watching an established power get punched in the face. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it makes things a little bit spicy, to be honest. Gonna get some heat out here in the midday rain. And who doesn't want that? Obviously, we believe Hrut have well within their capabilities to come back into this in searing fashion. What I'm interested in is can Graz keep it in the kitchen and keep cooking? Well, so, so far, so good, I think you'd have to say. It's a long way left to go, but that offense today, and this must be as a benefit of going out and facing out Grenoble and doing so well against them, it's a look cleaner and more assured than pretty much anything we saw yesterday. Yeah, it, yesterday you could see it in kind of fits and starts, but it feels like it's a bit more consistent out there today on the field. And that's exactly what you want. You want to go from strength to strength. That's why you come to these European Championship Finals. And when we, we were talking yesterday about it, even that, which was a bottom of the pool game, these are elite players who are on the teams. These are quality sides who work together a lot. And showing it now. Yeah, proving that they are not just here to make up the numbers. Catch up coming in a zone, just trying to test the patience of Kruitz, especially if they are down a couple of points as they are now. 
always want adversity. I think Krut will want adversity too. You don't want to come to the Championships Finals as fun as it sounds to just walk everyone. You want to be put under pressure because they are looking at Worlds, they are building towards it, and there's going to be an awful lot of adversity on that road. Yeah, you will face good teams. You will have tight games. So you need to have that experience, that confidence that you can win in these sorts of matchups. Looking very calm and very confident so far. And the transition comes to playing one on one. They squeeze it down the sideline, find an option. That'll do it. Beautiful offense from Chris and Yanni Anson finds Christoph Harris for the goal. It's 3 2. Established O line for Chris going out there and getting the job done as you would expect them to do, moving it around. What I like is uh, not afraid to throw couple of the spicier things, the hammer. I think it was Blausman who put that up to Jan Janssen on the near side. So we get another shot. Another look at the final through a few passes of the point. I mean, the thing is, if you're, you know, you're playing for Chris, I think there's an expectation that you have those throws in the locker and that you use those throws as well. Absolutely. For the first few runs, what I really impressed with that they carry that through. And they did open it up. I think they had 150 people invited to the trial. Um, from across the Netherlands and a few other further afield places. It's quite a big trial. That's, uh, you know, bigger than some Ireland trials. And by some, I mean basically all of them. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the point being that they're whittling it down with their eyes on world without losing who they are and what Hrut means, which is so central to the success of this club. So it's coming out in the zone for the Dutch as well. Little hammer over the top, finds a little pocket of space. And so far, they're being patient, trying to dump and swing around it. There's a little bit of room to work with here. Now Kaufman has it. Kaufman's trying to laser one through, but it's uh, tipped in the midfield. Franca Tenkata. It was a risky shot to take, especially when you've got the sneaky, sniping defensive capabilities of these young Rup athletes. Yeah, that's why a lot of the time you see that throw go over the top because you're just taking out that traffic in the middle, in that intermediary space. Bardol. High ready's backhand towards this sideline. Brauer has it. That is a nice grab made under pressure by Joram Mossink. Bit of a journeyman. Now he finds himself in Hrut. I do not mean that in any disrespect at all as Nils boom shot for the end zone is too strong and so catch up will get a second bite of the apple here or whatever your fruit of choice is. I was saying cherry yesterday and I'm not yeah, sure I, why. Neither am I. I don't think they are both perfectly legit phrases. Would you even go as far as describing them as cromulent? Absolutely they're cromulent yeah. So when you're describing Joram Messing as a journeyman, it's not to say like that's his level of ability, he's never been adept. It's like literally the man has been all over the world playing with all kinds of teams. Well-traveled. Incredibly well-traveled. Well-groomed as well, quite a handsome man. Yeah, and, and you bring with that, you know, a level of, you play with a lot of different teams. A lot of different can, styles, yeah. Yep, and you can help bring that into, you know, a new team, say, we play, we tried this over here, or we found that this has worked. You know, you've got someone with that level of ability and also that ultimate brain. It's uh, it's interesting. It's quite the life to lead, I imagine, travelling around the world just playing for all these teams. Because he's an incredibly good player. That's why he's able to just kind of pick up with people almost at will. He played with uh, Pelt once or twice, which we thoroughly enjoyed having him here. Came over to Siege and played with us. A great man. I always consider him a Pelt man, as anyone who has walked through our halls is. Anyone? I mean, if you want to do it. I know, I was just curious if there was someone who had walked through the pelt doors and was seen as not a pelt player. No, no, oh, we're okay. a big old family in this world. Oh, no, no, I was just curious. Very fair. As we're having a quick look at some of those highlights, that was a great grab by Joram. Uh, I, I am very happy to report that we have had a delivery to the commentary booth. The consisting of sandwiches and soft drinks and waffles and chocolate. And there is a reason why we love coming here. It really is such a pleasure, the way uh, everybody takes care of us when we come to Belgium here in Bruges. A lovely city. Beautiful. Plenty to do. <laughs> and plenty of lovely people to meet when you get there. So catch-up grass still have the lead, but for how much longer? Uh, how much well, longer? Uh, um, oh, are you asking me a direct question? No, I was asking the kind of coke. How much longer? 
No, genuinely, do you think ketchup grads have it in them to hold this off for a long time? Because I think a lot of people watching at home right now are going to be of the mindset that it's just a matter of time until they take over. They are up against it. They are up against it. But they've shown that it's not going to be all on traffic. I mean, they are leading in this game for a reason. Even if they do, get, even if, for example, they, they turned out here and they got broken, they're still trading up in this game. You know, they came out on D to start this half, so they're receiving to start the second. There are, you know, they've got, they've got a couple of breaks early, and you have to say that that's not by accident. I think, I think catch up will hang around longer than people might have thought before the game. Will they even hang around all the way into the semi finals? It remains to be seen. You feel that, you still feel that, unless this opens late. It's Hlitz game to lose, but, you know, maybe with hammers like that, catch up of playing with, well, the confidence that you need to beat a team like this. But that time, sensational throw over the top, and it's the simple reset that goes to the turf. Sometimes you wonder why you bother. Here's Mossink looking down the sideline. No one's going to get there except Yeto Badol, and we are tied up now at three apiece. Really impressive, just punching it in, taking care of business. No frills, no spills. And it might send a little bit of a chill down the catch-up grass spine. You can hear him shouting. They're here for it. They're loud and proud. I like the zone look by Rutt. The wind, not really a factor right now, even though the rain is coming down. So you're going to be able to put up those kinds of hammers. Catching them is going to be another matter. As you sit, get another shot at Joram's lovely floated pass and easily collected for the score. So three all is the current score. As the rain begins to come down a little bit more heavily, it can, we've retreated slightly further back into our little commentary tent, and I can hear it kind of just pitter-pattering the canvas above our heads. So a slight chill in the air as well that isn't helped by the fact that it's a bit cold. Well, obviously, but, but a bit damp as well. You know, like you're never fully comfortable. So it's very much put your layers on, you know, kind of take, keep yourself, like, keep yourself as warm as you can. And that's something for the players to deal with as well. Dragashnik looks underneath, refinds the formidable Michael Grayson. Grayson down the sideline. Dam knocks it out of the side of the pitch, and that is why she is a defensive stalwart of this Hrit side. As far as the people who have to play against her, an eponymous person. Yeah, Dan by name, Dan by nature. That is a wicked inside flick to find a space in the middle of the pitch. But it doesn't look like there's any real fluidity to this D-line offense after the turn here from Hrit. Normally when they get the situation, they can hug their way out of it. It's a brilliant layout from Suzanne Slur, but doesn't get there. Almost like, felt like it deserved to be caught, but the disc had other ideas. Here's the big flick from Schitter. He's looking for Geisel. Geisel doesn't get it. Just a bit too eager. There's a lot of influence coming from Lola Dam and Folk Schapp down there, putting pressure on him. Had the bid. Went for a tiny bit too early. And that's the worst thing in the world is you're coming back down to the ground, watching the disc slightly above your hand also come back down to the ground. So bring the disc in from the front of their own end zone. You see how it's real work to try and get players free downfield. And so they're just constantly trying to have to take these short resets or try and swing it. Nice up line cut there. However, does get the disc. They're coming towards it. Geisel uses the feet to stop the block. But Sharp pivots around for the backhand. And Moncal very nearly got there. Moncal very athletic and committed to the cause, willing to lay her body on the line. That throw just slightly too far ahead. So still three apiece, but this point is. Uh, Make that now three turnovers side, I think. It's not been the cleanest of points. I might be miscounting, it might be two turnovers aside. The point is, stands that isn't clean. And now they are looking deep, 17 on 17. Geisel wins that matchup, didn't really have to go as high as he can. 
because he had the position and now he's floating one in towards the back of the end zone and Geisel finds Magdalena Kreitz and uh, Katschab have retaken the lead at 4-3, still a breakup in this contest. It's something of a shootout for Graz as they are fighting hard and unafraid, just taking those deep looks when they come and then another one to Chris for the score. There was a lot of float on that. There was a lot of potential for a defender to come in and get it, but Katschab Graz don't care. Like, you know what? Let's swing. Let's let it hang. Let's bang. Great catch. He just makes it look easy because he's already bodied out the defender. It's less stylish, but it is more efficient and then floats that. Faith in the receiver and Heinz were just more than happy to pop up, bring that down, collect the goal. And that could be the secret to Graz putting up a competitive fight. Just keep backing your receivers. Everyone, no one really expects you to keep this competitive the whole way through, to be able to actually put up a proper fight. But let's be honest, they were probably saying that about you when you're going up against Grenoble. They didn't have a great first few days of the tournament, turned it around yesterday evening, going from strength to strength to potentially strength now. 4-3, back your teammates, no one else in the world matters, and just see if they come down with it. We did talk about this yesterday, didn't we? The fact that, you know, they'd maybe flattered to deceive a little bit. They'd shown good things throughout the tournament, but not with the consistency. They put it together a little bit more against leftovers, and now they're in a scenario where they've got their, you know, their destiny back in their own hands. Swing goes back to Blasman. Got that almost sun hoodie under his red Hrk jersey. Much more simple look on the Hrk kits this year. Underneath, an option down the far sideline is found. And Walt Janssen puts it deep for four, Kluart, and that is a vintage Hrtz. Janssen to Kluart is a combination we've called before and we'll call it again. Fantastic, well-read, well-bred, and 4-4. Four, four. Flawless hold, and exactly the response no, they were looking for. No, 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 floor court here definitely wasn't flawless. Sorry, couldn't, could not help myself, could not help myself, but... I got was, nothing but love for that, Benji, it same was, way I feel about you. It was right there, I mean, what, you're just going to leave it on the floor? Pick it up, throw yeah, it to people. I know, right, it's just too tempting not to, it's like the forbidden fruit, and there's no, nothing ever bad happened from eating that, right? <laughs> sure, sure, but honest, but yeah. You really need to know your Bible. <laughs> clean, clean as a whistle, that offense. So tied up at fours, it feels like maybe have it a, a good thing going a bit more than they did previously. So it'll be interesting to see how Graz respond. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to bet that they're going to respond with the hook themselves. They are, like we were saying, going from strength to strength, believing in each other and following through as here comes down, roaring down there. I think that was Aaron. Lola Dam gets the block, swiping one of her hit paws at it, knocking it out of the sky. Lola Dam doing what Lola Dam does, and what Lola Dam does <laughs> is get blocks. Now she's getting into the disc on an underneath pass, looking towards the end zone. Tight pressure and sneakily quick hands there from Matt Blasman. Little Tom's taming up, Tom's name a lot. But there's Matt, and they try and find a shot through into the front of the end zone. It's not quite the space for it there, but there might be a contentious call here, perhaps. Lola Dam thinks, thinks she got her hand underneath it. Let's see it on the replay. Well, bubbled. No, it's tricky because it comes at such speed. It's almost like a whiplash effect where the camera has to jerk back. I mean, look, if you're trying to keep Lola Dam in frame, you're going to have a lot of blur on your camera. She's a quick woman. In the end, they're going to cool it down and catch up underneath. Really nice snag made under tight pressure by Florian Moik. Moik looks downfield, layout, agonizingly short. Two defender or two receivers down there. I thought they were both like trying to measure up. Am I going to have to lay out for this? Which one of us is going to have to lay out? In the end, unfortunately, just bounces off the cuticles. So stopping the release points and again another little fumble, but this time Moncal makes it stick. Looking on that inside channel, 
And she finds Lola Dam trying to power this D-line offense to put the game back on serve. Down the sideline, pass is caught. Not long to go now, Aaron Mawson. Turns, isolate the reset, trying to muscle away up line. Very physical, little bit of shake and bake, and eventually the catch sticks, a break for Hritz, and we're back on serve, Lorcan. Bit unfortunate for catch up. They went with the one big deep shot, and there's only so many looks you can give Hritz before they're going to start ticking. Back on serve at 5-4, it's going to feel much more significant than just getting back on serve. Catch up Graz really trying to carry that serve into half and get another break out of it. But we know they can break him. We know they've got the athleticism to back up the ambition they have. There's another look at the Lola catch. And here, two potential receivers. So close. And let's be honest, it's going to take plays like that. As you see Aaron with the disc, one of the newer additions to the root side, showing they've got that youth element coming up through the ranks. And he's, he's doing the kind of flamboyant fakes, moving around his mark and then taking the easy pass. That's pretty classic root style. But as I was saying, like on the uh, missed layout, catch up Austria are going to need to make those kinds of plays yes. if they're going to win this game. It does feel like the way to, as an underdog to win these games is to sometimes you play the high variance strategy and you hope it hits. You like if you're, you want to play fundamentals, then over the course of a game, you just maybe are not consistent enough. But the high variance strategy, well, you can you generate enough big plays? Maybe they feel they can. And they feel that defensively they can do enough to prevent Hrup making them as well. Nice hammer over the top, actually. Has to be said that that's been a very consistent way of getting through this Hrup zone. Has been that overhead. They're confident in the throws, and they should be. Not the easiest to catch in the rain, but you can see the midpoint drying because there was the stall gap was still pretty low. Looking, turning, isolating a reset. Credit the Hrup zone because it's really forced catch up back. Constantly pushing, trying to trap them on that end zone. There's another hammer. They're wise to it. And trying to snag it with two hands. Couldn't do so. So Mossink down the far sideline, hitting the receiver in stride in the end zone for the goal. Another break for Hrut. They're now two points up. And this is maybe more of the game that people expected to see, Lorcan. Didn't want to breathe life into it by acknowledging it out loud, but that is our job here in the commentary booth. This is starting to feel a bit more like business as usual. Lots of pressure. They got all the way up to halfway before being pushed back, and uh, that was just the hammer turn. Like you said, the more you go to these high variance throws, the less they're going to come off. And Groot getting wise to it, and a lovely finish. Simple as that. I believe that is Franca Tenkata with the goal. Another one of the younger players coming up through the ranks. It's a really interesting mix, as you mentioned, because before it was just kind of the same core group of friends. But this year they've changed. You know, they had this big trial process. They want to they want to continue to be the best European mixed team at World Clubs in Cincinnati next, next year, as they were three years ago. They finished joint sevens with a Hesslich Erdverkul, the Ugly Anteaters. In a game everybody wanted to see play, but unfortunately, the wild Midwestern gods had other ideas. They I mean, sent a buffalo storm down to us, and we had to call off a lot of those matches. The indoor final stay was cool, but it did. But there were a lot of games that didn't get played, which was less than ideal. Insanity. And apparently, summer thunderstorms just a thing in the Midwest. They're like, yeah, it's a summer thunderstorm. And I'd never seen a sky like that. I thought it was going to be a hurricane. So Kaufman signals where the disc is to be, the disc is to be brought in. Christoph Schitter finds Geisel. Geisel turns, pivots around, throw to space is beautiful, but it might go back for a pick. Bauer did the right thing to secure the catch. Goal signal, though, decided that he wasn't going to be able to make up that ground. Good spirit, nice little hug there as well. 6-5, that, like, that was good. You thought, oh, might go back, but actually, you know what? No, there was, I was held up a little bit, but I wouldn't have been able to get there. The throw was precise enough, signal the goal, and again, nice little, yeah, good. I appreciate that. It's nice to see that. I love that break as well. The high release leading pass. To tricky. Shitha. So tricky. So tricky. It's almost as tricky to bust a rhyme that's right on time. It and that was right on time for a shot to the end zone. But we saw this last night as well. Catch up Graz 
would have one point against leftovers and say there's four or five turnovers aside. Then they would come out and score in three slick passes, looking like an elite level team that is going to be challenging for medals. So if they can have more of that, try and channel that, because that, that wasn't high variance. That was just top quality. I suppose the high release break flick for a leading pass is fairly high variance. It was, yeah, it's the consistency that you're lacking a little bit from catch up. Seeing a lot of familiar players out there for this quit uh, O-line. They're going to set up in a side stack downfield. Ort's going to bomb it. He's looking for cool arts. How many times have we seen this? Well, unfortunately, a lot of the time it also ends in that. When you look for the, when you look for the deep ball, it doesn't always come off. Not always. It was a large arcing shot, quite bladey, which we know Ort likes to put up. And Kalertz normally loves to collect, but a bit too far that time. Perhaps the wind slightly influencing it, but it's not hugely. Um, fairly established line. Very impressive. Blousman, number 99, another one of those young prospects coming up. But he is on that O-line and just delivering for the most part. That was a fine. Oh, that's where the foul is. Yeah. So I thought or, that was a mugging. Or has the disc in his possession. Uh, I mean, it's it's like artful Dodger-esque because he really picked the pocket, didn't he? Well, you've got to pick a pocket or two if you're going to no, get I some breaks. I think that time he's done more than pick his pocket, as you mentioned. He is kind of, he's kind of beat him up and taken his lunch money. Which is against the rules as opposed to just petty theft, which is very much within them. So they seem to disagree about who established possession first, so the disc is going to go back. I thought that the uh, catch-up player had it cleanly. That one's overthrown into the middle of the pitch. Well, Ort will eventually get what he feels might be his just rewards. Now pivots out to, in my money, the most underrated player in this division, Anna Minard. It's a fantastic shout. Ort with the throw and go. Oh, Kulats duked a couple of players out and a couple of camera operators as well. And eventually they go uh, into the front corner of the end zone for Ort for the goal, 6-5 to Hrit. 7-5 to Hrut. And they go like within count. one point of half. And Hrut just taking care of the basics in front of the end zone. That's a tough one for catch-up because it was an opportunity for a break, an opportunity to tie the game right back up. They will get these opportunities, it seems, in this game again. But they're struggling to take advantage of them. We can see Kalertz. To Ort. And as Benji was saying, one of the most underrated or maybe just ignored largely players in the mixed division, Anna Mignard. So what is it about her play style that really appeals to you, Benji? I, I think it's because, you know, playing on Hrutz, you're quite, there is the expectation that you, it's uh, a very, what's your favorite adjective for it? Swash Swashbuckling. Buckling. Look, fireworks won't work without the fuse. Yeah, well, the thing, and she is so consistent and so solid, a, a phenomenal decision maker. She does have those throws and she does put them on occasion. Ooh. But she's so consistent, making good decisions, executing properly. Uh, I think that's out of the pitch. That is an unfortunate that was error. Just, just maybe paying attention to the cones marking the uh, three meter line, uh, not the actual sideline. So Kurt with a bit of a cheap giveaway then from catch up, have a chance to break for half. Uh, infraction on the throw, a travel perhaps, being signalled by Michael Geisel. It is Boom to bring it in. This is a very funny, very funny, very fun name to say. Low grab, secured by Mossink. What's funny about Mossink? Aha. Low underneath, oh, bobbled, yes, no, no, not quite. In and out of the hands, wouldn't fall for Morris Vidcombe. He's going to swing towards this near side. Geisel stands tall. You can see the mark jumping up and down, trying all they can to get in the face. That is a, uh, that's not the easiest matchup there for a least boss doing the forcing, but did their job admirably, you have to say. Tried to laser that one through. It was not much of a window, but they found it to Moik. Has all the time in the world. Louis Armstrong style to find the receiver. I think it's Magdalena Kreintz again for a 6-7 scoreline. Impressive response by catch-up. 
not cut, not settling, not allowing. I mean, you, you get a turnover, a bit of a brain fart turnover as well. It's not like it's a play or anything. Those can be even more demoralizing. Virtually in front of your end zone against the favorites for this tournament. Well, one of the favorites. It depends on how much you appreciate Latvian Ultimate, of which I am a hearty subscriber. But to hold there, push back, and these are some lovely, incisive throws. I mean, that is a very narrow window, but that's the, the advantage of taking those narrow window shots is that if you can thread them through, you get defenders committing. And all of a sudden, there's two defenders over there. And if, you know, I was always told if you're playing downfield in the zone, you want to be marked by two people or by no people. If you're marked by no people, well, then you're not marked by anyone, so you're free. And if you're marked by two people, well, then someone else isn't marked by anyone, so they're free. That's a really great way of putting it. For all the years I've spent coaching, you still find out new things when you step into the booth with a mind like Benji's. I have my days. Ort catches the ball, thinks about the deep look, doesn't like it. Takes the swing instead. Bernard goes backwards. Now a blade down the sideline finds Ort. Got a blue compression sleeve on his right hand, on his right arm, gloves on both hands. Swing coming now to this near side to Yanni Janssen. Which is off for our brother Walt. Back to Minard. Often I've, it's weird seeing her without that kind of distinctive white headband that she used to wear. Now she goes downfield, tries to clear out some space. Ort does the same, toes in on the sideline, marked by Geisel. Oh, a lovely little shake and bake on the mark. Throw and go. Gets it around Geisel's large frame. Kulats toes it in in the end zone. 8-6. Groot take half. And they do so rather comfortably. I think even if uh, people were to see this scoreline before the game started, they'd be like, wow, Graz putting it up to them. And that doesn't tell the story of just how competitive the Austrians have been throughout this whole affair. They're getting turns. They're getting, they've got a few breaks in the bag as we just see that well-practiced calm, fluid offense of Rot Orton Kulertz. Two of the uh, appropriately acknowledged best talents in the division. It's weird seeing, it's not weird at all. It's been nice seeing the development of these players from the best young players in Europe to just the best players in Europe, full stop. It's very rewarding. Right, we're going to take a short break here to tell you a little bit more about what we do at OTTV, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you in 30 seconds. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund our work. To cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and beyond. Welcome back to OT.TV's coverage of XUCF 2021 here in Bruges in Belgium. Benjiris alongside Lorcan Murray. And if you've watched the commercial, you've watched that first half, and you feel like you would like to support what we do, the link to our Patreon is in the description of all our YouTube videos. You can find more details on our website, OT.TV. And for just a couple of dollary dues a month. Just a couple of dollary dues? You could become a patron on our Patreon page get involved in the community, help decide some our choice of live stream games, help OTTV what we do, do what we do on a bigger scale, go to more tournaments, cover more pitches at those tournaments with more cameras, better cameras, more crew, more commentators, make the whole production a little bit slicker so that we can bring you thoroughly enjoyable games like this. And you can contribute from, as we said, a little as a couple of quid a month, all the way up to being an ultimate producer. Up like Patrick from Maddox or uh, Stephen Cameron from Cameron & Co. Architecture, architecture R. 
every little you can do helps. Or alternatively, if you are watching us now on YouTube, live or on demand, where all the games are for free and will be for as long as we can do this, you uh, may as well like, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. The YouTube Holy Trinity is that dumb is not reeled in on the end zone line. This is, to say this is dangerous, is an understatement. No, this is uh, being locked in a room with a bear hanging off a cliff. Wait, are you hanging off the cliff with the bear? Or no, you the room in? is hanging off the cliff and it's locked. Right, okay, locked in a room with a bear. Because if I was hanging comma. off a cliff, the bear wouldn't matter there's, so much. There's a comma after the bear. Correct. Right. Eat shoots and leaves. I gotcha, grammar is important, kids. This is why the Oxford Common rules. Anyway, that's going to be a contested foul, I think. So the disc is going to go back into the hands of uh, Daniela Satina, another one of these Austrian players who's come through their stellar youth programs. Just wiping the disc from any excess moisture. Coming in on stalling six, the highest count a contested foul call can come in. This time she gets an offload to a handler coming through. Downfield. Not liking what she sees. Again, trying to get a lead pass through to those handlers. But the timing from the continuation downfield isn't there. That's the great opportunity to strike when your handler's catching, already looking at what's developing. And on the high stall, they're putting it deep. And all over that one was Furka Sharp. I mean, it looked like it was intended for him, the way he read it and got that position nice and early. Now downfield, finds Mawson. Into space, Kulin. Isolates a reset. High release flick towards this near side. Create a way to access that space to Dan. Unusual, but it worked. And then Dan, one on one at the front of the end zone, just isn't fair. And it deserved better because it was a fantastic effort to bring that in. Satina was well beaten, but the throw's a little bit off target and he knows it. The way you described that was so on point. It isn't fair to have to try and mark Lola Dam one-on-one, -on -one, but that disc was always turning in the wrong direction. Now let's see if catch-up can get going in the right one. Second chance to bring this game to a one-point difference. So a few warning shots fired across the bowels of the Austrians in this second half. Will they take heed of it? Uh, uncontested foul on the far sideline. But it did its job. Wasn't able to get the deep shot off to the uh, remarkably free from burning down the pitch receiver. Mesner fakes it deep, tries to find the receiver in that small area. Does get it through, but it's swung now to Satina. Still not seeing any separation downfield. So trying to continually work it between the handler set. And that's what good downfield defense does. You're trying to throw throws into tight windows for handlers. The windows aren't quite there to be hit. And it's another turn this point for the Dutch. Can they finally put it in? You have to imagine they will. With Valentin Fischer with the disc, another new recruit. Um, putting it out, unfortunately, almost immediately. So I guess catch up Graz with their second chance. Third chance even. Two turnovers. Third well, this, chance. This is, a, this is quite an attritional point now for both sides. But that happens sometimes. That's ultimate. I think it happens every single game, basically. There's always going to come one point. Because it doesn't just, when it rains, it pours in Belgium. And some of these points have just huge build-up turnovers. And some of them clean as a whistle. So about 45 minutes through this 90-minute game. With Fritz leading at half, 8-6. I was going to say the Austrians with the, di with the discs to close that gap to one. But no, it's overthrown. It goes to the AstroTurf. And it's picked up quickly. Big swing all the way across the pitch to Lola Dam. Finds a central option in that is quickly offloaded to Mawson. There's a wide play, there's a paper wide open underneath, but instead they're going to attack the break side where they've got some more space. Seems like there's space everywhere. Going to sit this one into the end zone. Wilhelm finds Mawson for a break for Hurt starting the second half strongly with a 9 6 lead. That was a wonderful put by Wilhelm. I thought she threw that in the wrong direction, but it had so much sit. Morrison was able to cut one way, lose his mark, turn, and then just comfortably collect it. 
I was hoping they'd show us this. I didn't know Foka had that in the chamber. That is an incisive backhand break that just tore or carved open, I should say, the defense. There could have even been two receivers there. That could well have been. Sort it nice and early. And a, a, a justified smile on the face of the receiver there. Catching a goal in an important quarterfinal like this. Grutz beginning to get a bit more of a stranglehold of this contest. While catch up just trying to hang around for as long as possible. Try and keep the pressure on. Two whistles you might be able to hear in the background. Signals that we are ready to go for this next point. Ready and willing. 9-6. Unfortunate for catch-up. Really wanted to put that one in to keep themselves competitive in this match. So a quick response is what they need here. And we've seen them do it. So a high still hammer right towards the far sideline. Inch perfect. It's an attack in the front of the end zone. They just about dropped in to fill that space. You're right there, Lorcan. A uh, uh, draw. Oh. All right. You, you, you got it back into place. And that time, just try to just throw it to Geisel. There was a defender right in the way. Uh, maybe just a little bit of focusing too much on what was about to happen next instead of what was happening in the moment. An amazing hammer, but unable to convert in the end. And now Hutt with the chance to extend their lead. So trying to put a bit of air under this one. It's ripped down by an Austrian defender. I think it's Dragashnik. Authoritatively as well. On the aforementioned Dragashnik. He wants to look deep himself. He's got a receiver to bring it in as well. It's been a very strong game for the Austrians. For the 49 shirt of Magdalena Kreintz. Magdalena Kreintz showing off her skills there. That throw was Perfect, and she could have clap catched it, but as if she's being contested, goes up single hand in the rain and just collects it. Absolutely fantastic stuff, but a really impressive throw. Angled it just the right way so it curved around the encroaching defenders and fell perfectly into the path of the intended receiver. So, just bringing you some updates on what we've got going on on the show pictures here on OTTV. So, we're just seeing a replay of that again. Uh, obviously, at the moment, we've, we're at catch up versus Hut. Another mixed quarterfinal on uh, field three at the moment is uh, the Finns Puti up against Seskidistus from uh, Strasbourg. And then field two is going to have two open semi finals, and field three is going to have two women's finals. We've got Kusp versus Randler, followed by Clapham <laughs> versus Gentle. And then uh, field three has uh, Yaka or Love against Jinx or Valkyria. And then 3SB or Shout up against Gravity or Free Speed. And then the mixed semi-finals are at 20 past five local time. Uh, field two has uh, the winner of this game against the winner of Flo and Urebro, whereas field three has the winner of Puti Seskidistus versus Sal the winner of Salas Bills and Guayalta. Back in play towards the sideline. And that is so unusual from Menard. He's such a safe pair of hands, but with the disc a little bit slippery, it just somehow seemed to squirm his way free. Desperately pivoting around, stool count must be rising again. And good focus by Kalas to mop that one up because there was an Austrian receiver lurking behind. Oh, really? Oh. Sorry, it all goes back into the backfield. And the disc is absolutely thundered deep and plucked out with some devastating nonchalance by Christoph Harris. He, I've never seen someone roof someone so calmly. This is what we were talking about earlier. Catch up Graz will get the turns, will have the opportunities, but the defensive group makes it so difficult. Jan Janssen got that turn as far as I'm concerned. I know Klerz was smart, bring it down. To me, that was all Jan Janssen on the mark, just terrorizing the force, or with using the force. So 7-10, catch up. Still in this, as we have another look. Benjamin Roy with one of his patented gratuitous fakes. And Walt Janssen, no force on, just slings this with a cheeky little bit of inside-out shape on it. 
and boop, cool as you like from Christoph Harris, and it's 10 7. Fun, fun game this look, and not it's that I expected anything else. I honestly, when I saw this matchup coming, based on yesterday evening, I was like, there's a chance that Hrut are going to walk these guys. And that might not be the most entertaining match in the world, but that just shows you what I know. I was actually uh, waiting outside the bathroom, talking to a few people, and they let me know about how the game against Grenoble went for catch-up and how strong they were looking, because we, we saw the glimpses of greatness. Now we're starting to see maybe beams of it, and if they could get it to be slightly more consistent with that level of ability, They'd be well in this game. So, a couple of big shots. It's a lot to ask of them. But when else are you going to get the opportunity to do it? So, confirmation of the women's semis. It is Cusp versus Valkyria and Yaka versus Gravity. So, I may have had those a little bit mixed up previously. Apologies for that. Here's a deep put for catch-up. Trying to find it and read it and bring it around, around the arm of the defender. Sven Kleinhappel. Bauer, looking at the receiver in the end zone, doesn't like it, would rather go into the backfield instead. There's a receiver one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, didn't fancy his chances of putting it into the space, giving the receiver a chance to make a play. But it is going to be sent back into Schitter's hands. Very reliable handler who has been playing incredibly well for Grass today. So Pick is going to bring a temporary stoppage to proceedings there. Just going to bring you some updates from some of the other, uh, other some of the other quarterfinals uh, once this point has finished. Just check back in. Unbelievable. That is not a thing that a player should be allowed to do. It's not a thing the human body should be capable of withstanding either. What a defensive play. You know what? Take the time out there. Bask in your glory. Can, we, can we join you? <laughs> amazing, amazing defensive play. Well, that is uh, something truly to be savoured, I think. Let's look at it again on the replay. Just trying to mirror the player's hips and then explodes out of there. Oh my goodness. That's Kablamo. That's like, that's proper billboard material. That defensive play deserves the 1960s Batman sound effect track. By which I mean BAM! BAM! POW! Kablamo! Whammy. Exactly. Pop. It is uh, Visa van den Brink with the, I haven't called his names, and this is the thing, you know, not a big name on the roster but clearly earned his spot with defensive ability like he's displayed just there. So elsewhere in the quarterfinals, just going to let you know that as this is 10-7 at the moment, Tuchrit. Last we heard it was 5-5 between Urebro and Flo from Wrocław. Uh, Salaspils took half 8-4 on Guayota, and Puti are up a few points on the French side, Sescidistus as well. That is currently 9-5 to the Finns. So just trying to keep you abreast of all the uh, semi-final action. Qu semi-final, quarter-final action even. The winner of this game will play the winner of that Urebro flow game that is tied at fives. And on the other side of the bracket, it looks like being Puti versus Salas Bills, although that is yet obviously still plenty of time for those games to change. Just going to confirm as well which women's semi is where and when. So Shout versus Valkyria is on field three at two o'clock and Gravity versus Yaka is at three or three as well, but that one is at 3.40. So, so much action still to come today, all across the two pitches and all over YouTube completely for free as here come Rutt looking to put this one away. 
They're going to put this one deep. Bit of a chase, but I think the sideline's going to win in the end. Difficult That's, to outrun the sideline. It is a little bit. It, gets, it got in position nice and early. And it's a shame, really, that the, uh, the defensive bid from Van den Brink was not really utilised for anything in the end, because it deserved more. So Graz will bring it in from the front of the end zone. Klein Harpel, quite loose short, almost old school style. It's a very generally very good differentiator of when someone starts to play ultimates. How loose do they wear their shorts? Underneath, making a tight catch, is Kainzmeier. Finds Bauer, and now Bauer trying to really get past the mark, but have to credit that because the only direction in the end was backwards. Sailing out towards the break side, Klein Harpel doesn't have a continuation that he likes though. Catch up, working it down the sideline. They find themselves space for a shot. Klein Happel to a receiver. Not today. Dam closes the door. Dam. As he has done so frequently to players over the years. Now there's a player on the floor after that bid. It is uh, Bauer for the Austrians. Just having a little bit of conversation about the contact that happened before the play. Understandable, Barrow was right on Shute's shoulder and was looking to get a layout D, if I know the man. Which I don't know him too well, but, you know, I've had the pleasure of watching him a few times. But it's, but it's, it's ultimate, you know, mm -hmm. at, at this level. I can, you can only, it doesn't take a genius to, to, to suspect what was going on there. Van den Brink goes around to Dan. And there's a little bit of continuation downfield. Will they continue to jam down the fourth side or will they show a bit more restraint into the centre where a nice snag is made to keep it alive? Now centrally gets it, wipes his hands, make sure that the rubber crumb comes off. Wilhelm, again, now they're trying to work it down this near sideline rather than the floor. It's Monkau. Brilliant inside shot, brilliant inside shot. And Dam can turn around and continue it with an around for the goal. It's a break for Kritz. 11-7, finally creating a bit of breathing space between themselves and the Austrians catch up Kratz. This is, to an extent, what a lot of us expected, able to get that important score after a very long point. And to be honest, it was a similar thing I saw in the game before where Louvre were taking on Yaka. They were close matching them in a lot of ways and pulling off some really impressive, clean possessions, great scores and like intimidating defensive plays. But when it came to the real attritional points, that's where the veterans, the established power, Yaka in the previous game, Hrut in this one, it's where they step ahead and really make their mark. And they're locking down those vital, draining, emotional points. And it's more than just the extra score that you get, it can be a real blow to the mentality and focus of the team you're playing against. Yeah, I wouldn't have considered it. Some people think, you know, oh, if you're, you know, you're doing, you're really hitting your groove against the side that you're kind of maybe outmatched. You know, you should ease off the gas a little bit. I, I think it's almost disrespectful sometimes to, to take your foot off it. You know, you came here to play ultimate. They came here to play their best. This yeah. is the European Championships. This is a quarter final. Yeah. of the European Ultimate Championships. These are one, two of the eight best teams it mixed in Europe. Of course, they're going to go hard. Of course, they're going to be some fantastic plays as we uh, show a little love to some of the people on the sideline. Huddling under umbrellas. So the rain is coming down a little bit fiercer than it was earlier. Adding to that chill in the air. Chill in the air. Yeah, it's... You know, you came here to win. If you rest players, maybe, then gets a bit closer. You might have to bring them back out again. They get, so that can be a bit more tired. You know, you, you can lose shape. And, you know, you can try some things. You can maybe be a bit more expansive without being disrespectful in how you do it. 
I understand what you're saying, because you don't want to look like you're disrespecting people because you're just throwing banana stuff and you stop valuing yeah. the disc so much. But at the same time, these are the perfect opportunities. Like this is, we were saying earlier, basically a trial for their world yeah. game or their world's team, as well as being a European championship. Start with 150 people. Like you're only going to whittle that down if you see what they've all got to do. So in these kind of opportunities, yes, start playing the other lines. Hopefully they'll extend the lead even further. If they start letting them back in, that's good information to have as well. And Absolutely, grads have the ability to get back into this game. It's not that far away from them yet. Baseball is a sport that has a lot of problem with unwritten rules, and it just makes you seem so stupid because all your life in sport, you're told, you're always told to, you know, play your hardest as much as you can. And anything that goes counterintuitively for that, obviously, you're supposed to enjoy it. But you know, why? At what point does it become? Do you decide that? Oh, actually, this is too much. You know, you're out there to play ultimate. You want to play your best ultimate. As opposed to too much. I don't think we have enough hammers and big bladey flicks like that one. Beautiful vision. Shitter on the far side. Hits the receiver right on the goal line. And then the simple continuation into the end zone for the goal. Making the catch in the end is... I. Oh, I did have that earlier. I want to say it's Johannes Kaufmann for the Austrians. That'll be 11-8. And here's the thing. Because... Hrit haven't given up. Uh, Katsov haven't given up on this. No. So why would you, if you are in a winning position, you know, even if it was 14 nil, you can bet that the other team would go out there and they'd still try and score. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially if it was 14 nil. Be more likely they'd be about to give up as like 14-1. Okay. Nobody wants to be getting them bagels. But you're exactly right. It's the whole point of competition. It's the whole spirit of what's going on here. It's another aspect of spirit of the game. Spirit of the game takes a lot of different forms for different people. As we have another look at just look at that blade. Zing. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, it's a multifaceted thing, isn't it? So, like, are you being foully? Are you communicating what, you know? Are you giving everything you have? Are you yes. competitive? Like, there's a lot of people who interpret spirit as you give me everything you have at all times, and I will do the same to you because that's a sign of respect between athletes. As long as you're doing it within the rules, that's an incredibly legitimate interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, no disagreement from me. Like, things like positive attitude and self control. That comes positive attitude doesn't necessarily mean being happy all the time. It means being approaching the game with a with a you know a focused mindset. As that pull pins Hrit right in coffin corner, and Janssen now four three the gender split in favour of the gentleman on this point. As Ort. Janssen's wide open in the middle, doesn't like it, takes the up line option instead. Very purposeful pump fake that time from Yanni Janssen. Now Blasman wants to blade it to the end zone. He's got a receiver and who else but Floor Kulatz for a 12-8 lead. Fantastic response by Ruth. Sorry, what was that catch up? Oh, you're, you're trying to do your namesake? Well, no, we're just gonna go from all the way back in our own end zone. Open side, open side, work it. Lots and lots of running, lots and lots of effort going through the hands of basically everybody who was on that point. That was fundamental and it was fun as hell to watch. I loved the shot by Blausman as well. And, you know, you could not start in worse field position than that. You know, back corner mm -hmm. of the end zone on the fourth side and they looked completely unbothered by it. And you can tell that that's the side that's been in this situation so many times before, that was a brilliant fake, I thought, from Jans. And I love when they put conviction behind it and you really get defenders convinced as to your intentions. And then this blade is just slung deep using the wide release point to get it round the arms of Dragashnik. And it hits floor in stride. That flow is that throw, not as easy as he made it look, Lorcan. And it shows you why Blausman has fought his way onto that O-line. Like, that was the Root O-line. If they're going to be in Worlds, odds are that'll be the O-line that's going out there to try and get it done. Very impressive. So relaxed as that goes back for it. Another pull. Here they go. So Root trying to pin, catch up deep themselves. This one is fielded on the one hop. Centered towards the middle of the pitch. 65 minutes gone in this game.
Time cap at 90 minutes with the score cap at 15. Good footwork and good handiwork as well to keep that one in bounds. It's Britentala who manipulates the mark brilliantly to find the lane. A pick will send the disc back to that previous throw. Really great work against the mark and a tough break to get off the sideline. Danger zone back into the middle. Reset play and showing the class that they have. They can match this defense. You don't score eight against Pruitt unless you've got some good thing going. But that one is ripped down in the middle of the pitch by Walt Janssen. Such a good player to have to be able to cross over to two lines. You can have him dominate or no, and if you need to just want him to get a bit more involved, put him over to defense and he'll get you a big block. And then all of a sudden, you've got a formidable thrower on the turn. And that is a formidable catch from Marcia Kulin. Unreal stuff from the Hrit receiver, 13-8. How did she get that? That, I thought, I couldn't see it on the monitor. I just saw the throw, and I was 100% convinced that was touching turf with some aplomb. But no, Kulin, absolutely not. She's not gonna let that happen. Scoops down, that was almost trailing edge, about a half a millimeter above the ground when she caught it. And Marcia Kulin is schooling them out there. 13-8 now, the current score. Just two points late, two points away from a semi-final berth that we'll be streaming later this evening uh, against the winner of Flo and uh, Urebro. Just going to take a little quick look at the live scoreboard, if I can get one for you. Ultimate century is a bit up and down. Well, upset, in, upset alert in the making, perhaps, because after it being 5 all, Urebro have taken part 8-5. So we did see that you know they had potential and they could take some names in this tournament. Could they about be about to take the name of the Polish champions and get themselves a spot in the semi-final against Krut? That would be scintillating match. It definitely would be. That was an incredibly impressive grab. So catch up, have a disc in their possession. Try to split it. Press and pinch and move players about downfield. It's almost like a puppet master with the marionette trying to pull the strings, get the lips to move in their various ways. Dribbling around, trying to find an option. High stall just laid it back in the end to the dump, and now the swing goes a bit more central. Line half all with the this is now going down the line, popping it into the end zone. Strong catch that from Sebastian Bauer. That'll be 13-10. No, 13-9, I beg it. So really impressive performance. A flawless hold and showing that there's plenty of fight left in it. And uh, we just want to give a quick shout out to the YouTube comment section for letting us know that uh, Benji might not have been accessible there for a moment. Don't worry, I heard it. It was very entertaining. So Benji, just talk us back through that point. Just in the end, just simple, working it down. Nice little bit of shake and bake. Handler goes up line, pops it into Bauer for the goal. And that should be 13-9 on the scoreboard. So yes, the uh, suppositions of the chat are correct. Benji did unfortunately put an errant foot down and fall into a puddle. Poor crit Critter nearly drowned. But uh, we're gonna... Hey, it was a deep puddle, all right? It was a... For puddle terms, yes, it was definitely a deep puddle. But he's okay now, and he is excited to call it the rest of this game. Graz have that in them. It's just they don't have it in them quite enough right now. But it shows the potential of this group of players and this manifestation of a long-standing club out of Austria. So 13-9. Just going to wait for our digital scoreboards to uh, to uh, to drain itself as Grit do what Grit do, and they put it deep. We haven't seen Walt Janssen go deep, but he has posterized Michael Geisel, and a well-deserved kick spike makes it 14-9. Ort to Janssen, it's a classic. It's the Iliad of Dutch ultimate plays in the mixed division. So impressive. I mean, it's up there with like Janssen to Kulertz. Just, they have those constantly ready to go. And when we're talking about catch-up grass and how they do have these abilities, he Art waited for nothing. He picked it up, he sees Janssen. They know what's happening. And he absolutely yote it 
and then it's it's not even a case of picking your match up because it's Geisel he's matched up against, but a slightly better read, and he goes up nice and early, and he rips it down with authority. One point away from the semis now are the Dutch. Wow, this game has uh, it's swung back and forth, and in the end, it just feels like Hrit's strength and depth has really shown, shown through. You're exactly right. And what's great about this new strength and depth that they have is so much of it is new elements they're bringing in, either raising up from the younger parts of Groot that they've been training with them for a while, or also a couple of the more established powers that, for let's be honest, a few years have been like, hey, Groot, you want to maybe think about let me play for you? They're like, no. But now with their eyes in another big world, they're like, okay, let's see what kind of auxiliary they've, forces we can get in here. They've opened up the roster a little mm -hmm. bit, and it may have made them even more fearful than perhaps we thought. Which, let's be honest, because like, we were pretty afraid of them as it is. So, catch up as the sun begins to peek through here. So, maybe the sun will shine on this catch up offense as well. High release towards the far sideline. Dragashnik turns, pivots, powers deep. There's no one there though, except a hook defender. High release over the top. Of all of the new additions, I think Foka is one of the most impressive. He's so dominating on the defensive end and is an absolute asset. Plus, he's shown off. He had that great break throw. He had that flick that admittedly went too far, but real asset on both sides of the disc on that D-line. And there's a foul. Yeah, so just going to be a little bit of a stoppage here. A bit engaged in discussion, waiting for it to be checked back in in the hands of Munkau. Just a little update in the schedule. So we've got next on this pitch, we're going to have Clapham versus Gentle first, and then Kuzblafotta versus Ranla at 3.40. So here's the disc on the sideline with Kruitz and the chance to put this game on ice. High release backhand, a little bit fluttery, and there's a pick downfield that will temporarily halt proceedings. They're just waiting for the disc to be checked back in here. Faking around, trying to find an option free. It's Dam into the end zone. Finds Mawson. Hutz will see you in the semi finals. Fantastic performance and ending as we expected it when we got the surprise start of the 3 1 run and the opening break by Graz, which speaks to the power they have and the potential. And you can see how happy they are with their performance as they deserve to be. It was a very compelling one. So fantastic effort. Hrut, march on to the semi-final. And who's waiting for him there, Benji? Do we know yet, or the rest of the game's still about to wrap up? I can, I can do a little bit of digging. I'm not sure if we have any other confirmed results in the bag just yet. Uh, last we heard, uh, Urebro were up 8-5. It's now 8-7. Last we saw between them and Flo Wrocław on the other side of the bracket. 14-5, Salas Mills at the moment over Guayota. So that one is as good as done. And Puti with a 10-6 lead over Seskidistus, which you can see at the moment over on field three. And that is going to do it for us here at the moment on ulti.tv's coverage, ulti coverage of XCUCF. Next game starts at 2 o'clock local time, so that is in 25 minutes' time. It will be the first open semi-final with the Bullfrogs of Clapham from the UK taking on Gentle Open. You never heard they're called the Bullfrogs? No, I know they're the Bullfrogs. Yeah. And uh, it'll be a great game, and it'll be a pleasure to be there. I've been Lorcan Murray. I've been Benji Reese, and we will see you on the other side.